And welcome back to the Constitutionals Podcast. I'm your host, Chad White. If you didn't know, this is the premier podcast for the website, cpluscomedy.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there, episode 289.5. Here we are with a very special... You know what that .5 means? It means I've got a little something special for you. Hey, which I interrupted myself with. <laughs> On this Wednesday morning, I have a comedian of note that has worked on Earth to Ned, uh, uh, Rhea and the Last Dragon as a character, appeared in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania as a waiter, I believe. I don't know. I've never seen the movie. I'm an adult. I have seen Rhea and the Last Dragon. It's great. I love that movie. Very true. She, you know, as a woman or somebody who identifies as one, was on season nine of NBC's Last Comic Standing, as well as Last Call with Carson Daly. I'm talking about somebody who has appeared on the Doughboys podcast, someone who appeared on on Never Not Funny just last week. The theme song is 40 seconds long. 40? 57 seconds. The theme song is 57 seconds long. I've been talking since the 40 second marker because that's when I allow for that to happen. It is ne- We are now officially 2 minutes and 20 seconds in <laughs> or so. I have yet to mention the comedian's name. It's Sierra Kato. Kato. Excuse me. Don't pronounce it the way that is written, Chad. Yes, I spoke to young Sierra over there. That is not her <laughs> that's not her stage name. Sierra Cato. Uh, she's a fantastic stand-up comic. A great TV writer. And wouldn't you know it, she also acts. We talked about her new special Funt. F-U-N-T. That special again is Funt. F U N T, and you can you can find it wherever you watch specials. She's a fantastic comedian, and she really works that stage when she's up there. When you're watching it, I mean, this is something I mentioned to her: the direction, the producing, it was fantastic. And you know what I think? Uh, you know, uh, now that I'm thinking back on it, a lot of it had to do with the colors. She's wearing a, a green top. The colors of the stage are like purple and blue. But there's a lot of dynamic camera work. There's a lot of great stuff she's doing on stage. She's addressing the audience. She's looking down at people and talking to them as opposed to what I see in a lot of comedians. Because I talk to a lot of comedians. Nobody knows. <laughs> Is that they're looking out into the audience and just they're in the abyss. But to me, it appears as though she's looking at each individual audience member, which is... Uh, just crazy to say the least. I, I uh, think she's a, a very funny person. And I'm so glad I got to to sit down and talk with her to talk about Funt. We also talk about what kind of food she likes to eat over there in Los Angeles. <laughs> she's from, she's uh, from SoCal. I'm from Atlanta, so we compared uh, what we were able to uh, eat. <laughs> she's also, and I do, look, I mentioned that she does stand up. She also writes. We're here to talk about Funt. It's available uh, uh, with the great people at Comedy Dynamics. Love, Lovely people. Love those people. They're fantastic people over there at Comedy Dynamics. They, they uh, really know what they're doing. But Sierra is also a standing up comedian. As I mentioned before, she was on Last Comic Standing, Last Call with Carson Daly. She did some stuff for Just for Laughs. Just's. For laughs. She also uh, is an actor, as I mentioned before, Ant Man and the Wasp uh, three Quantumania. Is that three or, f- or is that the fourth one? Let's let's go through Ant Man's. <laughs> the Sex Lives of College Girls. She was also an actor. She also appeared in the G Word with Adam Conover. She also voiced characters on Ray and the Last Dragon. 
the movie. She appeared in Earth to Ned as well as Rit wrote Rit Rit on it. <laughs> and close enough on HBO Max, which is the follow up, not follow up. It's another show that JG Quintel did for uh, the Warner brand. Uh, oddly enough, Earth to Ned on Disney Plus and Close Enough on HBO Max have both been pulled. So you cannot watch those shows at all, which sucks. Because <laughs> I think Earth to Ned is a, uh, I think it's uh, fantastic. I thought it was very funny. There's about an alien who came down to Earth to destroy it, but uh, he ends up learning about human ways. Was Gina Carano on an episode? She was. Was this before she got in trouble for saying horrible things? Yes, it was. Did I watch that episode? Not, I'm like not even kidding. The day that she got in trouble. <laughs> I did. I watched the episode and I was like, who is this beautiful woman? And then she then literally like a couple hours later, I got like emails uh, in the in the C comedy email account. Uh, press not press releases, like emails from Variety and Deadline. I was like, oh boy. I was like, who is this woman? And like, oh no. She's also gonna be on uh, some shows that are coming soon. She's writing on the Golden Axe series, which is based on the uh, Golden Axe video games, if you know those. So that series is going to be on uh, 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 Comedy Central. Later, I don't know, at some point. We'll see. Uh, n- next year? I don't know. I don't want to put a timetable on it. There's the uh, Exploding Kittens uh, show, which is based on the board game, coming to Netflix at some point. Again, I have no idea. And some other stuff. Oh, oh, also, 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 this was also emailed to me. Um, she will be uh, featured as a, uh, in one of the episodes of the PBS stand-up comedy documentary series, Roots of Comedy with Jesus Trejo. And that'll be available on, uh, to stream for free in May on PBS's uh, app and the pbs.org website. She's got a lot of stuff cooking, and I believe she's engaged. So be on the lookout for that uh, that wedding <laughs> too. <laughs> All right, let's 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 roll through this stuff again. This is the longest intro I've ever done. Let's roll through everything again. Who cares? This is my show. <laughs> Who cares? You all came here for Sierra. Uh oh, who's this character? Who's this guy? I'll stop. Let's roll through everything again. Sierra Cato. Funt, F-U-N-T. You can find that wherever you get your comedy specials. Amazon, Apple TV, YouTube. You can, uh, for purchase, you can go over there and buy it. It's great, you know? Right now, it's on sale right now for $3.49. Whoa! Excuse me, for (laughs) $11.49. But you can rent it for $3.49. Whoa! I don't know if that's a, uh, a a thing for everybody or just a thing for me. Let's go to Incognito and, and pull up that same Amazon website. No, I can't. I can't log on. Okay, <laughs> okay. Anyway, Funt F U N T. Check it out wherever you find those things. Uh, uh, the uh, in May, PBS stand up comedy documentary series Roots of Comedy with Jesus Trejo. You can find that. Thanks to PBS SoCal on PBS app or PBS.org or find the uh, all six episodes of the series streaming May 24th on PBS's YouTube channel. And then you can find it all across your PBS stations across the country June 21st at 10 p.m. Okay, I got fun. I got that. Oh, and then uh, 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 Exploding Kittens. That's coming soon to Netflix. She wrote on that show. And, and Golden Axe. She, I don't know what she did. I don't know if she wrote. I don't know if she was an actor on it. But that'll be coming to Comedy Central at some point in the future. So there you go. And you can follow Sierra on uh, IG at Sierra Cato. You can follow her TikTok, Sierra Cato. You can follow her on the web, sierracato.com. As for us, if you want to see a video version of this interview, head to youtube.com slash cpluscomedy, where you can see video versions of all the interviews as well as every podcast. 
available to you Oops. over there. Uh, you can subscribe to every podcast like Late Night Lately, The Late Late Night Show Show, and LinkedIn Logs, The Job Show. Uh, what else? What else is going on? Uh, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at C Plus Comedy. Me, at Chad Black White. Thank you for listening and enjoy Sierra Cato. Hey. Hey, Sierra. How's it going? Chad. Good. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I was actually just uh, uh, watching the rest of your uh, your special. As oh. It was fantastic. Oh, thanks for watching. I appreciate yeah. it. I know it's, uh, I mean, it's such a, it's hard to get anybody to watch anything for longer than a minute. So I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's 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 very funny. The secret to these, I do, I do, I've been doing these inter- interviews for 10 years. Oh no! Oh, sorry, I think I lost a connection in the middle there. Okay, I. Are you able to? Uh. Uh-huh. Y- oh yes. All right. How how are we good? Are we good now? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, uh, but sorry, I missed what you said. Yeah. No. No worries. I was just saying, like, I, uh, you know, I when I first started, I I watched everything, and now I I don't. So when I sit <laughs> down and sit and like watch somebody something, it really means something, and I need you to take oh, that to heart. You. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's it is taken to heart. I appreciate that. I, I um, I'm just you know, kidding. It's don't don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I do. <laughs> but wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for um, yeah, having me on this. I'm very excited to talk to you. Yeah, I know you're a busy person. I, I saw you uh, uh, were on Never Not Funny, and uh, and I've known you uh, since uh, 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 Doughboys a couple of years ago. Oh. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Nick Weiger I had worked with and he was kind enough to have me on and him and Mitch are so fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thanks. And you even you popped up on um, Earth to Ned uh, as as one of the one character uh, a time. And I thought that was a very funny thing to see, especially like, you know, I guess it's because people are around, you know, and say, hey, why don't you wrote on the show? Why don't you pop For in sure. as a character? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was nice of them to let me do that. And then I think, you know, Eliza Skinner, who was the head writer, Mm -hmm. um, is also a performer. So I feel like everybody was kind of dabbling in multiple things. And she did some voices for some of the characters. So I feel like, yeah, it was a very like collaborative, multi, multi uh, hat wearing situation. (laughs) <laughs> do you like do you like doing that? Do you like writing with uh, a bunch of people and then having to shift gears and go and write for yourself? How is that for you? Like, what what kind of tool set do you utilize for that? Yeah, I feel like yeah, very similar. I I love writing for other people and or other shows and like with other people because I think mm-hmm. I got into comedy as at large just because I like funny people and like laughing and being around funny people. So it was kind of like, oh, well, if I can work in a setting that has that, that's great. So stand up, I didn't realize I think going in, it can be like isolating in the create creative part because, you know, you're often writing alone and you're kind of writing for yourself. We are on stage alone too, but it is collaborative when you're off stage and, you know, hanging out with other comics and stuff and watching other comics. Um, But I think as a result, yeah, I kind of love the writer's room because you get to just always be with other funny people, always working towards kind of like a common goal. Oftentimes, you know, it's the showrunners like main vision. So you're helping them, you know, figure out what they want to do best. But like, yeah, I guess I've, I've been lucky too. I've worked in a lot of good rooms with a lot of good people and funny people that we all share the same sensibility. So it hasn't been like fraught with drama. Um, And I've worked for really, really good bosses who are both like, open to you know taking others ideas which i think is pretty rare i mean i think Mm -hmm. that's a good you know that if i were a boss i would want to be that kind of person who's just like not always like my idea is the best um (laughs) but it's hard to come by i think a lot of people you know it's not the default so yeah and you seem like a very collaborative person especially uh, you know, just telling me how open you are and and willing to work with somebody who's willing to work with you. It's I think you know uh, you right now in your career uh, with the people that surround you, you know, with Eliza Skinner, with Nick Weiger, uh, those those type of people are willing to let someone else be funny, especially if they can just you know step aside and say, hey, this person's you know running on on a hundred right now. Let me let me show the world to them, and uh, it's that I think that's what it takes 
especially since the strikes we had a second set of strikes in the in the it's with with the actors and writers you know i think the first ones i remember at least were uh when i was in high school in uh 2005 2006 something like that yeah, yeah so yeah. it's we're now now that we we all kind of have this common goal it is it, it just makes sense to not want to be that one asshole who's like i'm gonna i'm gonna hold all the comedy stuff for me and no one else can get any of this Totally. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it's like the I think you're totally right that the strike kind of reminded everybody of that, because I think it can be such a, you know, oh, you know, when a star when there's a movie star, it's like, oh, that's that's the one person. And they put in so much work to make this movie happen. But it's like, no, there are hundreds of people like thousands, maybe like, you know, depending on the movie who made it happen. Um, so I think the strike yeah, was really like, oh, hey, we're all doing the same thing here. We're all kind of have a common goal and um at least the the actors and the writers in that scenario and crew members too who are like out there in solidarity you know so i think yeah that was like a good i think i just was in um i was lucky enough to like be in a writer's room right kind of shortly after the strike was concluded and like okay. i feel like the the vibe overall you know um you know credit to again the people i worked with but was just like oh hey we're just coming off a strike like we are here to you know work together and no one's like the the star here you know in, in the sense of just yeah. like i think collective action kind of reminded us like hey it's fine we're all like union people yeah um so yeah that was cool now uh, uh turning back to funt uh which is the name i have to be sure to pronounce uh correctly not oh, go back a couple it. of letters <laughs> <laughs> sure uh, sure the uh, I, where, what was it like? You know, speaking of crew, uh, with that, how what was it like preparing for that, writing for that, choosing the stage, choosing the direction? Because it feels like this giant. I mean, not not. I'm not calling out your your height or anything. I know you're I'm <laughs> well, not the tallest I'm very person tall. in the world. <laughs> yeah, you're very tall. You're six foot two. Obviously, yeah, six three, but that's okay. No, I'm... <laughs> six, six three. Excuse me, I, I was short changing okay. you. That's okay. Um, but like, I I was, I was watching on the stage, and you have this commanding presence. I, you were like, you're taking up the entire stage, yet you're standing right there in the middle. Uh, 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 telling your jokes and everybody is just focused on you. What was it like, you know, developing for that and and having to to capture all these angles and and make sure that this thing was larger than life? Oh man, I mean, you know, that's very kind. I think credit to comedy dy uh, dynamics and um, uh, you know, Matt Cubis who was the director and like the like oh Cisco Henson who is uh, you know all these all these wonderful people Anna Roberts um they are just pros at shooting comedy specials. So I came in, you know, with my material that I'd been working on for a long time, but in the, in like the, the months leading up, dialing it into an hour that felt cohesive mm -hmm. and, you know, the skills that I had developed from doing stand up or whatever, that's what I brought to the table. Um, and they were really like pros on, Hey, this is how, this is all the cameras. There's one over there, there's one over there, but like, don't even really worry about it. Cause they know how to like, you know, follow me if I'm going to move that much. I don't move that much. But, you know, they were, they were very like, you're in good hands. We're going to make you look good. Like, just focus on the creative part. Right. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, I got to do make fun additional decisions like, oh, what am I going to wear? You know, and like, how is that going to contrast with the backdrop? And like very, you know, fun things like that um, that you have to do. But I think like it was really credit to them to let me just focus on the material yeah. Um, focus on making sure that, you know, it feels comfortable. And, you know, uh, for instance, there's always in tapings, you know, you might flub a line and then have to walk it back and say it again, because, you know, you want everything to be very clear and funny. Um, so like, I think that happened maybe twice throughout the taping, but like, you know, they were very much like, Hey, if that happens, it's totally fine. We just walk it back and then you do it again. <laughs> and then the <laughs> audience hears it again, which is, <clears throat> not what we you know are used to in regular stand-up live like that yeah. would be the weirdest setting so that was like the one different thing maybe of a taping that I hadn't um that I that I've actually experienced before I've watched people do it before in other tapings but mm -hmm. um I myself was normally like you got to get it right on the first try so that was a, an adjustment um and yeah I think like I, it was just you know I I remember when I the first time I ever did stand up for tv I think uh well, it might have been the second, but it was like when I did Last Comic Standing, I remember that was like a big, mm -hmm. you know, deal for me. And um, I was young, but I think somebody like leading up, I was pretty nervous and somebody gave me great advice. I was like, you guys, 
I think they told everybody this, so it wasn't just to me, but it was like, you guys do this all the time. You know, you, yeah. this is just what you do all the time. And so that's kind of what I think of every time there's a bigger taping or something that's a little bit, you know, more lights and uh, glamour um, mm -hmm. for stand up. It's like, oh, we do this, uh, we've done this hundreds of times and maybe thousands. So like, just do what you do. And then like, the only difference is that there are some cameras there to capture it. But um, yeah, and then, they they made it look great at the end of the day <laughs> yeah well you know so, it also yeah. it's also part of you know who you are too as a comedian and a presenter you did a really there's like one joke in particular you're talking you said uh, you referenced your diaphragm and you you know dragged your arm across your stomach and you looked dead in the camera and i just thought oh she knows exactly what she's doing there's a <laughs> there's a confidence there that uh really just said uh, you're along for the ride or you're not and if you're not then get out oh thank you sure yeah i mean yeah the confidence thing it's it's taking some time but i know that you know for sure like it's it's hilarious thinking um of just when you're watching someone too it's like if they're not confident then you're kind of nervous and then yeah. oh you know so i'm you know trying to just be like hey everybody it's it's fine. Yeah. Someone's driving. It's okay. Well, even though those uh, those butterflies are still there, uh, obviously, all the time, uh, even if they're less pronounced than they were you know, a couple of years ago, how do you, what is, what is like your, how do you overcome that? What, how did, what were the steps that you took in order to, to go, okay, this isn't, you know, besides someone going, you do this all the time. Uh, this isn't as big a deal as what, as what it uh, once was. What are you, what are you doing to, to overcome that? Sure. Yeah. I think what's helped is like just living longer, <laughs> getting older, <laughs> being like, oh yeah. You know, I mean, there were times when, you know, you think like, oh man, this uh, stand up set was so bad or everybody talks about bombing and it's like, you just really have to get back up. And I think it's the same thing for mm -hmm. bigger deal sets too. It's like, I've, I've had sets taped where I felt like, oh, I didn't do so well. I wanted that to be better. Or like in the room, it was better. The taping didn't turn out so well because of just the way sometimes things get translated when the taping. Um, and then what I learned is like, you just keep living and <laughs> no, you don't die immediately. Um, even if the internet <laughs> wants you to, and, um, yeah, you keep, you keep going and people forget and maybe, you know, like the only person really focusing on my, you know, show that I had that didn't go so well as me because I feel like, yeah, everybody moves on. And so I just try to be like, yeah, it's going to be fine, you know, and yeah. especially now there's so many, so much content on the internet. Of course, everybody talks about that, but then for, <clears throat> excuse me, for like now, if you put up a clip on Instagram or TikTok, like it's got like a day where people will be like, oh yeah, yeah. Like that's funny. That's great. And then you know, there's a million other things they could watch tomorrow. So I think it's kind of refreshing um, to be like, okay, cool. It's pretty fleeting now. Like people are putting up footage way more frequently, of course, because mm -hmm. you kind of have to, if you want to like build your audience. Um, and that's like a lot more pressure and a lot, it requires you to be a little bit more prolific on the, the crowd work. <laughs> but yeah, I yeah. think, you know, it definitely takes the stakes way down, which I kind of am like, oh, relieved in the sense of like nothing you put out there is like really going to be that long lasting. So that's bad if it's really good, I guess, because you want it that to do well. But if it's bad, hey, people yeah. will forget. Yeah. And, and, you know, but I think you, uh, especially with Funt, you 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 thrive in a, in a world where all the jokes are kind of interconnected, but you could take them separately and put them on TikTok and Instagram. Uh, and, and speaking of that pressure, does that if, like with it being fleeting, uh, uh, do you ever think about, hey, how this object permanence could come back and, and you know, this one joke could really be a hit if the right, you know, a set of people find it? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, that's always the hope, I guess, is that you're mm -hmm. like, okay, man, I, you know, I'm posting this, net, you know, today, let's hope all the people are online who like this particular topic, who don't have kids and, and think that's, you know, funny, I guess. I don't know. I think there's like a lot of uh especially if you have a joke that you really like like there's you know it used to be you can tell it for 20 years and no one would ever know because yeah. you're just performing live and you you know i mean i i would still see like you know some of the comics still perform their same sets and like hey it works and it's a new 50 people every night so who cares but um yeah with the with posting it does feel like a little bit weird to maybe repost the same bits um yeah. 
So you're kind of like, oh, this is the day. Hopefully somebody finds it, you know, but, um, but no, I think I'm also being a little less precious about stuff too. You know, I think mm-hmm. it, it tre- teaches you to be like, Hey, that was a great joke and you wrote it, but that just means you can write more. So get back to work. Yeah, yeah. Um, and hopefully, you know, it, it hits the right people at the right time. But, um, if not, you know, you'll have something else for them. So yeah, yeah it's, it's just a little bit more demanding, but I think more, um, yeah, it, it's, it's good. It's, I think it's good for comedy writing, uh, out there as far as like making you, yeah, just need to rise to the occasion. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you, 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 you mentioned, uh, posting the same bit, uh, just like in passing, I think that'd be a really good experiment for a comedian to try to, uh, get like post like the, the skeleton of something. And then over the next course of, you know, their next five performances and they're building on it, just keep posting that and like a different version, like little iterations and make people not make people, but like, see if people can see the differences in the, in the five postings. I think that'd be a really oh, yeah. interesting thing to do once, you know, not, not, not more than once, but just once. <laughs> sure. Yeah. No, it's kind of like, a. I'm, I, everybody wants authenticity in social media now. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit like people behind the curtain, you know, people maybe who are interested in doing stand up would be, you, you know, learn something from, oh, yeah, that's the process there. Nobody yeah. comes out fully baked. So that's cool. Now, this might be a loaded question, but do you like TikTok? Do you like Instagram? Because it's uh, your your stuff is is posted there and it does well and it works for you. But, uh, you know, just if you didn't have to do it, would you want to do it? Yeah, um, that's a great question. I think I always try to stay pretty open minded with the new like thing, right? Mm-hmm. I, and you know, we've seen YouTube kind of come up, and uh, maybe that was I was much um, younger, but I think when I was still doing stand up at a certain point, and I remember um, like outside the comedy store, there were like billboards of YouTubers, like people like when that was fresh and was like you know, um, Hannah Hart or like, you know, people, uh, Grace Mm -hmm. Daly were, were people who really had, um, like just built their comedy presence in their bedroom, you know, or whatever in their apartment and everybody who was trucking out to the comedy store and paying for parking and (laughs) waiting for, waiting for their names to get drawn for, uh, the open mic were all like, oh man, like we're all pissed about it because it was like, oh, they, you know, they have a billboard and I'm here, you know, doing this every day. Like they're not, it's yeah. not real. But anyway, so I think I, I clocked the fact that like, there's always going to be resistance to the new thing, of course. And I get that too. And I, you know, I didn't start till later in the game, I think, because there's a little bit of like, oh, that's not something that we do, you know, and I didn't have a ton of footage that I was taking all the time. Right. Mm-hmm. Versus, you know, so sometimes I remember in the past, you would go out and Oh, set up your tripod and your camera. It's kind of embarrassing. You're, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you think you're gonna be good tonight? You're gonna tape it, right? Oh yeah, sorry. You know, and and now it's just it's so commonplace that I don't feel that same embarrassment, which is nice, mm-hmm. right? Like before, I, I sometimes I would even bring my tripod and not set it up because I was like, I don't know, it's this, this is not the right night. I don't know. And then <laughs> oh, I didn't tape it. Damn it, you know. But then now, yeah, everybody does it all the time, so you really have no like qualms about it. And then. Um, yeah. And I think like, okay, so the the pros that I've noticed, I discovered a lot more comedians as a fan, you know, mm-hmm. like people who have never, I, I, I'm pretty much just around LA. So, you know, maybe you would learn of some New York comics that come and visit or people who come and visit, but um, there are a lot of comics who I feel like are in great cities, you know, just staying in whatever city, don't feel the obligation to move to LA or New York, which I think is totally fair because they're building a huge audience online on social media um, yeah. in a great spot where they can get a lot of stage time and you know, ha- have a great cross section of audience. So, so I think that's really fun. Um, I think, yeah, the downside is like, you're just constantly pumping out stuff and there's not mm-hmm. a lot of breaks, you know, and, and it does feel very like, oh, well, if I don't get one out today, then I guess it's, I lose the momentum. Um, and that's a little bit weird of a way to think of creativity. Like, I think you should be able to take breaks and it kind of demands that you, you know, have ebbs and flows. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of, um, Yeah. So it's weird to kind of treat it like a a bit more systematic of being like, okay, Monday, we got to post it and we got to do it. And then you got to make sure you comment, you know what I mean? Then you got to put the hashtag. So that is a weird uh, angle to it. But uh, yeah, I think I'm just trying to stay very hey, like, let's not be the the guy grumbling about the billboard. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like that. I like that attitude. I like that approach. Uh, but you know, it's just in mentioning the, the, the momentum and, and like keeping and maintaining the audience and everything, uh, in, in that, in that world, I think, you know, watching your special, 
when it cut away to the audience, uh, you have a very diverse audience and, and it seems that you're able to reach enough people from the LA area uh, and beyond, you know, outside the LA area too, uh, to, to drag them in and drag them. I'm sorry. That's not the right word to bring <laughs> them in. Yeah. 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 <laughs> to bring them into the, yeah. yeah, exactly. Oh God. They don't <laughs> want to be there at all. Um, but like to, to sit there and, and, and watch you uh, do comedy uh, and, and it makes sense. Um, because you are who you are. You're you're just a very affable person on stage. Um, but you did mention that you do read <laughs> in the in the special, you mentioned <laughs> that you do read some of the bad comments. Uh does that like how does how does that feel for you to see, you know, some jerk ass online, you know, write the most mundane thing that that uh, in a lot of cases, 99% of the time, uh is wrong. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I I love uh I feel like a lot of people now and comedians you know the comments that's that's where you're getting a lot of feedback <laughs> maybe unwanted um but yeah throughout throughout like the youtube you know youtube comments were always a thing and now it's kind of instagram tiktok i've i've noticed i feel like and maybe you know anecdotally tiktok seems like a little bit nicer i feel like it's maybe younger and then maybe there's more censorship really? on it or whatever but okay. maybe it's because i don't know maybe maybe not Maybe I'll say that and then I'll get one tomorrow and I'll be like, no, Chad, <laughs> revise what I said. Um, but I think, you know, it's always like, it's interesting. I would say if it's really like about looks or hateful stuff, that's like, who care? You know, that's like, clearly this person has a problem. I doesn't bother me as much, mm -hmm. but if it's, if it's like, oh, you know, things that I already kind of believe about myself or in, I'm insecure about already, then those are the ones that hit. So if it's like, oh, you know, like that's not, you know, or that's not funny. Sure. That's like annoying, but that's kind of common. But, um, yeah. the ones that, oh, I know, like, and I, I think, um, it's like sometimes ones where they don't get the joke and you're kind of like, oh, I wish I could, you know, I, I really try not to respond because I think it's just so tacky, but <laughs> I, but I think it's like, if they're like, oh, wow, you know, this is actually like, if I'm making a joke where I'm trying to either, tackle some topic that's like oh you know I have um I for instance I'll give a more solid example uh like the one where I'm talking about like it oh I have um a degree in computer science but then I like I'm a comedian and so that yeah. that was kind of from the idea that like oh I I have I didn't want to be another Asian computer scientist but that was really like internalized racism really and mm -hmm. then that cost me lots of money so obviously it's bad and so I think my takeaway from that is like see bad racism bad you know yeah. I mean, internalized racism doesn't always you know that's not good but sometimes people will inter interpret that joke as it's like purely just racist i guess like they'll be like yeah. oh well this sets us back by being like asians are computer scientists and i'm like mm -hmm. oh well i think that's actually what i'm trying to say is bad <laughs> but it's like i don't want to respond to that because yeah. again i don't do that but i think that um I think those hurt the most because sometimes it's from within your community and you're like, oh no, that's, I'm trying to make it so that you laugh. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to hurt you, you know? Yeah. And so I think those are the ones that are the toughest, but I, I've heard that from other people too, where it's like, it's like, you kind of don't care if it's from somebody who's like, oh, I wouldn't even get along with that person anyway. But if it's someone from like your own family, you're like, oh, oh no, <laughs> but I, but I'm trying to do this for you. What What's going yeah. on? You know? So I think that's the tough one. Yeah, I the, that that's that's an excellent way to put it, and uh, you know, I guess it's just like the jadedness in me where I don't want someone to point out my flaws. Like I know, I know I have them, all right, yeah. and, I'm, and I promise I'm working on them at some point in the future. <laughs> but right now, let me live with with the worst parts of myself. Oh, definitely, um, yeah, that's exactly you put that perfectly. It's like, please, I know, trust me, I'm the one who would be commenting that, but. I, you know, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I, I, I noticed, I saw this uh, trailer. Uh, it, it is the Roots of Comedy uh, with, uh, is it Jesus Trejo? Uh, yeah, Jesus. Is, Jesus, okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I was I was reading it and I was like say Jesus but I don't want to be again internalized oh, yeah. racist I don't want to be like oh guy, no good but... yeah yeah I I again I, it could be it could, <laughs> it's spelled the same you know yeah yeah <laughs> uh, what what was the what's the, what's this what what do people have to look forward to for for this doc and uh, uh like like what do you talk about in there you don't have to give too much away but uh, what was the experience like for you I mean it's so fun yeah so this is like a docu series where. Jesus goes on like to different cities, um, which are 
the hometowns really of these uh, separate comedians. I can't remember how many, maybe seven, um, where, yeah, he like kind of gets down to the root of like what their comedy is. And a lot of that is maybe family, maybe just their their heritage or what they do for work on the side. You know, it, there's a, it's a really like cool, diverse group of comedians, not just in like background heritage, but like what they do and like interests like it's really it's it's cool um yeah and i met some of them but uh, but a lot of them i'm just a fan of and obviously live in different cities so i maybe don't cross paths with them as much but um and then jesus is like the the heart and the host of it all so he really like you know interviews and talks to us but like he was such a great so for my episode i guess um which is really the only thing i know much about uh we were back here in los angeles um he's from here i'm from here so that was really cool but we're from like different parts of los angeles it's obviously a huge city diverse city um and then you know like we kind of talked about my family history because i i also am like kind of fourth generation south california southern california person so so like we talk about my my dad's side and my mom's side, Chinese American, Japanese American, but like fourth generation. So like lots yeah. of cool Asian American history in there. Um, and, you know, we talk about kind of like what even just like my parents, I think were interviewed a bit and about like, well, you know, what do you think was going on when she was starting this? So yeah. And why'd you guys let her do that? Um, wow. <laughs> no, was, so yeah, very like in the, the deep history of why we do this uh, mm-hmm. a little bit. And yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I'm very excited to see the other episodes, honestly, because I, I have I have no idea really other than what everyone knows. So I think it'll be just like a, a great watch where it's like, oh, different thing each time and um, funny and, you know, good stories. So yeah. I'm excited to see it. So, uh, since you grew up in uh, SoCal, what uh, mm-hmm. what kind of places do you like to eat at? What's your favorite place to go to if you just need to uh, pick up something in a pinch or something someplace you need to sit down at? Ooh, yes. Difficult, difficult um, question. So, I mean, I grew up going really a lot to like San Gabriel Valley area of okay. Southern California, which is like, you know, a little outside Los Angeles, but um, heavily Chinese American. My grandma lived out there. So we would always eat at uh, like Capital Seafood, which is in Monterey Park and Great Dim Sum. Um, so I feel like in that area is kind of like becoming more popular now. So there's like way more restaurants all different kinds of Chinese Chinese food that like normally I would probably be in more like the the Cantonese Chinese food uh, yeah. type restaurants, but there's so many regions. So there's so much more that I'm even getting introduced to as an adult. Um, and yeah, I would say that, yeah, that's probably the go-to, but there's also really good, you know, um, Japanese food in little Tokyo that I would grow up going to and then you know just great tacos everywhere so I don't know <laughs> it's such a great like it's I I can't imagine living anywhere else for I know like there's there's really so many great cities for food um yeah. but I think it's funny when people are like oh LA like where do we go eat I'm like oh where do we begin you know do you, yeah. how much time do you have yeah so. I have a, a Google Maps list of you know all the cities I want to go to New York, LA, whatever, uh, nice. and I and I'll always put in you know if I hear about something good I'll go okay well this place is in LA or an LA area and I'll just yeah. add it to the list and Ooh. and uh, and now that list is I think at like fifteen or something so I'm oh, always good. just uh, you know raring to go uh, that was just for me that one question just for oh, me oh hey yeah just for the I mean you can't go wrong anywhere and you you know you're ref- uh, referred to or really anywhere in that area yeah. but um we, where are you based i'm in atlanta and so Ooh, the okay, the nice. food here is like all southern you know fat mm-hmm. fatty heavy stuff like that and so whenever we get something i'm in a, i'm in the the old fourth ward which is kind of like the brooklyn of atlanta oh, cool. essentially uh and it is uh, more or less and it's midtown area so we we have a good amount of places some places were uh, on the Michelin uh, list this okay. year. They just, they came to Atlanta for the first time. They added places on the Michelin list. There's, um, but we have food halls and everything. So that's where you'll find, you know, I'll, that's where I'll finally be able to find some uh, decent Mexican or Cuban rather, oh, some cool. decent Japanese, some decent Chinese, but we don't have as centralized of uh, places that you can go and find Cantonese food or anything beyond, you know, just sushi. I want to be able to find that stuff. So you always, you have to do some deep Googling. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it'll, yeah, get more and more, but, but for sure. I mean, the, the, it's always interesting, like what, what um, different foods are places because here, I mean, 
the only reason there's great and there's obviously amazing Korean food too. I think it's Koreatown is the biggest in the U.S. or whatever, and then the the I think it's the biggest um, Chinese population in San Gabriel Valley. It's just really yeah. sprawling, is why. But so yeah, so that's why we have all that, of course. Um, but I know in the south there's a lot of Vietnamese food. I yeah. I, I, I I'm barely familiar with, but yeah, that's very cool. There's a uh, uh, an area north east of me or northwest i think northeast and it is uh it, uh chambly chambly uh georgia i guess it was called and it, there's literally just a long stretch of road where it is all just asian based food and you can you can't walk it you have to drive it cuz it's all oh, you know, wow. highway lanes but it's <laughs> it's that's where you get the diverse amount of uh, different cultured foods that aren't like of Eastern style foods that, yeah. uh, that you can't find anywhere else. And uh, I, I, I don't go up there too often, but every, every, every so often I like to, to poke my head around and, you know, get some sweet donuts up there or, you know, get some, get some good pho or something. That's, that's my style. No, that's great. I mean, and I will say Southern food is probably the best. <laughs> so okay. I, I also would be, I'm, I'm a big fan. I mean, I've really, I've never been to Atlanta, but I've uh, my fiance is from Memphis, so we will go and get like dry rub and all that great yeah. barbecue and like yeah, I feel like it's like oh yeah, this is this is something we're definitely missing in Southern California. Not a ton. There are great, there are some great places, but you mm -hmm. know it's it's a little few and far between. Yeah, so I always I say know. this. Mm -hmm. I say this on uh, first dates all the time. Is that I think people should go on first dates to a Memphis style barbecue, just something that's messy. And that you can oh. just get like, you know, so you can really see what that person is and, and, who, and who they are <laughs> as they eat, you know, a, a pile of ribs. Yeah, yeah. No, that's interesting. That's a good tactic. Kind of. Yeah, it, it's like everyone's human. You know, you're going to bring them back down to earth if you were like putting them on a pedestal. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, Sierra, I don't want to waste too much of me, more of your time. Um, I very much appreciate you talking to me. This has been a fantastic conversation and I've been hunting you down for three years and now I finally got you. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you for talking with me. I mean, this is really fun and I, I feel like, yeah, you have such a, a amazing like interview legacy. So I'm very excited to be added to that list. Thank you. Well, I, I do what I can. And uh, congratulations on Funt. Congratulations on Roots of Comedy being featured in there. And uh, I hope uh, no more of your shows get pulled off from streaming services because yeah. I never got to finish Earth to Ned, which oh. is unfortunate. Uh, um, hopefully, yeah. Hopefully it'll resurface sometime. But yeah, I know. It's, yeah. a, it's an unfortunate trend. Yeah. And then close enough too. Jesus, that show was just, I know, I know. Uh, just so good. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. So silly. What? Well, yeah. Hopefully, you know, but there will be more on the way. Oh, I actually, it was just announced the one that I just finished writing for. It's Golden X. Keep an eye out in 2025. Okay. It's based on a Sega video game. So hopefully yeah. that one will go up. Comedy uh, Central. Comedy Central. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I saw that. I saw the uh, press release for that. Um, it was emailed me a couple of days ago. So I Ooh. will keep an eye out for that. And uh, congratulations. I love that game. I wasn't very good so at fun. it. But, you know. It's a little hard. It's a little hard. It's okay. The TV show will be easier. <laughs> Easy to get into. Uh, yeah. You have a great weekend. And uh, and, and again, congrats. All right. Oh, thank you. <laughs> See ya.